What's up? Wow. That was, that was a great worship service. Holy Spirit showed up. Amen. Amen. Goodness gracious. You know, this morning, uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, we, uh, we were talking and uh, Jessica uh, said she saw a shirt that she liked. And then she showed me a video. And it was uh, how David danced in front of the Lord with all his might. And I just cannot wait to do that. I cannot wait. Like, oh man, what, what a great and amazing and powerful God we have and a God that we serve, amen? amen. You know, um, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like, uh, have you ever heard about the pastor that, pray, that, that preached for rain for like month after month? Scotty told this story a long time ago. This pastor preached for rain for months and months, and everybody was like, bro, I'm so sick of this. And then one Sunday, somebody brought an umbrella. Amen. And, uh, you know, Miss Gill had a word for us this morning. Yell it out loud, Miss Gill. Hope is on the way. I'm ready. Um, help is on the way. The rain is coming. It's coming. But while we sit here in the refining fire, how much more powerful are we now than what we were two months ago? I want to tell you, I, sit, I, I was literally standing here right where Shane's sitting, and I was like, man, I was just praising the Lord with all I had because there's nothing else of me to give. And some of you are in that exact location. There's nothing else for you to give but just praise the Lord. And I remember I stood there, and I was like, God, the fire hurts, but what? It, look at what you're doing in my life. Amen. Look at who I am today from what I was a week ago. From what I was a month ago. Yeah, I, whatever you want, I'm ready. Whatever you want, I'm ready. Today, you know, I was listening to, uh, I always get, sometimes I get on Instagram and, and, and I listen to short inserts of a sermon and, and this pastor said this word and it was the word surrounded and today I'm going to preach on trials again sorry but that's what God's leading us to do because I feel like we are in a refining fire we are in a trial and many of us today feel surrounded do we not we feel surrounded we feel like Every single way we turn, there's an arrow coming. There's an arrow coming. And there's another one coming. We feel surrounded, you know, and it's very, very difficult at times to live in the trial. It's very difficult to live while surrounded. And, and his little excerpt wasn't anything about what I'm preaching today, but that word surrounded stuck with me. And it led me to 2 Kings chapter 6 when Elisha was the, the prophet, you know, Elisha was a prophet, and Elisha was really, really tight with God. If you want to go ahead and turn there, 2 Kings 6, Elisha was really tight with God. Elisha, uh, God would tell Elisha what was going to happen before it happened. And he did this to protect um, the nation that he was in. He would tell the leaders what the enemy was going to do. And so they, they were always one step ahead. God is always one step ahead of your problems, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Praise God, he is one step ahead. Because if he was not, we would be in bad shape, would we not? But he is always one step ahead. Elijah was tight with God. In fact, you know, like I said, he was so tight with God that his enemies hated him. He was so tight with God that the enemy hated him. How many of you are there today? The enemy hates you. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy from you. The enemy wants to distract you. The enemy wants to harm you. He wants to take away your anointing. He wants to take away your calling. He wants to take away what God has given you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I pray. I know, I know it's easy to preach about this. It's another whole, whole other thing to live. But hey, I've been living it. I've been living in a refining fire. And you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. Are you ready to fight today? Because I believe there comes a point in time where we're passive, we're passive, we're passive. And, you know, in Ecclesiastes it says, hey, there's a time to be peaceful. There's a time not to speak. And then guess what? There is a time to speak. There is a time to go to war. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to declare a war today against the enemy because I'm tired of it. I'm sick of what he's doing. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the wolf coming in, coming after you. I'm sick of it. It's not going to happen anymore. Because there's a time to stand up and go to war. There's a time to speak. There's a time to let things happen. There's a time to make, start making things happen. And I believe that we're here today. I believe that we're here today. You know, when it feels like you're surrounded, that means you're doing something right. When you feel like you're surrounded, it means you're doing something right. In fact, it means that you're taking ground from the enemy and he doesn't like it, so he is declaring war against you. You see, when you take ground from the enemy, he declares war. When you take ground from the enemy, he automatically, he automatically get, you automatically get on his radar, blip, 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 and what happens? You get closer and closer and closer. And guess what he does? He gets scareder and scareder and scareder. I don't even know if that's a word, but that's what the enemy does. That's what he does. He gets more afraid and more afraid and more afraid. So what does he do? He does not pull any punches. It's time for you as a Christian to not pull any punches with the enemy. So we see... You know, I said this. Um, no, I said this about a year ago. I called Nehemiah a dog. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Nehemiah was a dog. That's what the kids say. You know, you, you, right, right, Jalen? Yeah. yeah. Jalen's a dog, right? I love Jalen. But really, um, Elisha was tight with God. He was a dog. He was like. God would speak things to him. He was a prophet, obviously, and he would speak things before they even happened, and, and his nation was always one step ahead of the other one. You know, Elisha had no fear. Elisha had no fear. And I know that when I say that, you're like, how does somebody have no fear? Because I feel like I've been living in fear. Right? Well, let me tell you this. Fear is a lie from the enemy. And everything from the enemy is a lie. Fear is from the enemy. And if the enemy speaks it to you, it's a lie. How many times does the enemy try to tell you who you are? How many times does the enemy try to tell you your worth? How many times does the enemy try to tell you you're not good enough? Or, hey, you just need to stop doing that because you made one mistake. You're done. You know, you, you did this, you did that, you're done. The enemy, all he's going to do is lie to you because he is tired of you taking ground from him. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know this or not, but in the end, in the end, the Bible says that, hey, all the ground is going to be taken. All of the ground is going to be taken. You know what I'm saying? The enemy thinks he's doing something. He's already been defeated. Jesus Christ said, hey, when, 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 when he was hanging on the cross and he said it is finished, I believe that statement. He has already won the victory for you. You have to walk in victory and stop walking into the defeat that you're walking in. He has made promises to you to prosper you and not to harm you. He has made promises to you. It is time to start walking in the victory that God has placed in front of you. Because God is always one step ahead. So if we go here to um, 2 Kings chapter 6. We see here in verse 8, so Elisha knew, you know, Elisha did not have any fear because Elisha knew in who he trusted. Elisha had a personal relationship 
with God and he knew in whom he trusted. He knew that there was no way that God was going to let him down. And I want to tell you this today, ladies and gentlemen. It might feel like God has let you down, but all that is is that the enemy has stolen something from you. And God says it is good because it is your testimony that you will speak to hundreds of people, thousands of people, and they will become saved because of the testimony that I gave you. Because it's going to say the enemy took this, but look what God gave me. Y'all, we don't believe that today. I can tell by the reaction. We don't. Do you know in whom you trust? Because that is the first step to knowing who you trust. To have a relationship deep enough and surface level to know in whom you trust Him. So right here, it goes in, chapter, in verse 8, it says, When uh, the king of Arab was at war with uh, Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, Will we mobilize our uh, forces at such and such place? But immediately Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, Do not go near that place, for the Armenians are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place um, indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he would uh, be on, a, on the alert there. The king of Aram became very upset over this. He called his officers together and he demanded, which one of you is a traitor? He called them, which one of you is a traitor? Because everything I do gets called out. Everything I do gets called out. Which one of you is a traitor? And it, it's, it's funny because he goes on and says, they say, um, who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It is not us, my lord, the king. One of the officers replied, Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your own bedroom. Elisha was tight with God. <laughs> Elisha was a dog, man. Elisha was, was different. He was, as the, he was built different. Amen? Amen? Elisha was built different. He goes on to say, go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. You see, when you're doing the Lord's work, the enemy's always coming against you. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about ministry or whatever. I'm talking about when you're living the life in front of people and doing the Lord's work, the enemy will come against you. Because the enemy hates that. The enemy hates it. And a report came back, Elisha is at uh, Dothan. You know, what's so funny to me right here is that Elisha knows what the king's doing because God is telling him but he is so confident in God. He trusts in whom he trusts in so much that he knows that they're coming. He knows they're coming. And you know what he does? Oh, you got to move that real quick. You move your legs, man. I got some eggs. Can I have some? <laughs> hey, Elijah says, I know they're coming. Come on. I'm not going to lie. I'm starting to feel like this right now. I know they come and come on. Who else is there? Amen. Who else is like, hey, listen, I know they coming, but I know in whom I trust. And guess what? I'm going to sit right here, and when you get here, we're going to get it. The gloves are off. I'm done. You know, we, we think so many times, we think when we get, when we get passionate, we think it's fleshly. Don't we? Rain come down. Rain come down. When we when we get passionate, we think it's fleshly automatically. Guess what? Sometimes when we get passionate and we take the gloves off spiritually, it's because we know who we trust. Amen. And I'm I'm just like, come on. So Elisha's like, come on. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna sleep real good tonight. I'm sleeping real good. So one night, the king of uh, Aram sent great, a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning, he went outside. So Elisha had a buddy there, 
The buddy woke up early. Elisha was not tripping over it. He was perfectly fine. His buddy woke up and walked outside. All right. We got that? Buddy woke up and walked outside. There were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Now, I can just imagine. Oh, <laughs> it would be like you camping, and you go outside. The, there's a bear out there. <laughs> Bro, there is, a, there is a bear, and he's coming this way. You know what I'm saying? And that would be like me sitting here saying, okay, let's go. Come on. But spiritually, that's what we're doing, amen? I mean, come on. So it says, he says, oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried because he cried it to Elisha because guess what? Elisha was such a man of God that the enemy hated him so much that he was coming to get him. And Elisha wasn't scared. Elisha wasn't scared. Mm. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him. For there are more on your side than on ours. And there, I'm sorry. There are more on our side than there are on theirs. I said that wrong. There are more on our side than there are on theirs. And I'm sure, I'm sure the servant of the man of God was like, this dude has lost his mind. This dude legit crazy. I thought he was something. This dude, no. He said, there's more on our side. Than there is on theirs. I'm going to tell you something today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to submit something to you today. There are more on your side than there is on theirs. There are more on your side than there is on theirs. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Walk in victory today. Why? Because God's got your back. God has got your back. As we continue here, I love this. It says, it says, Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up, he saw that, that, that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were to look, if you were to be able to take your eyes and you were able to spiritually look around this place today, you would see demons and you would see angels. And the angels of God are fighting back the demons because your soul matters. Amen. Your soul matters to Jesus. There is a war going on. It's biblical. There is a war going on every day for your soul between good and evil. There is a war going on. And as you come in here, there is a war going on for your soul. And Jesus wants it because Jesus paid a precious price for it. Amen? And so right here, he literally is like, he looks up and the whole hillside is full of, of, of horses and chariots of fire and, and he literally is able to see that who is on their side outnumbers who is on the other side, even if it is spiritual versus physical. You see, because we don't fight against flesh and blood. We don't fight against that. We fight against spiritual entities in high places. And that's just obviously, pre, you know, whatever there. So then it goes on. And he says, so it's so crazy to me how Elisha prayed for the servant's eyes to be opened. And then he prayed for the Armenian armies to be closed. <laughs> Ain't that awesome? It, 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 it says, as the, Armenian, as the Armenian army advanced toward him, Elisha prayed, O Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. You see how he prayed there? It wasn't a demand, it was, Lord, please. Lord, please. Lord, please make them blind. And so when, he, when, when God did it, then Elisha, he went out and told them, you, you've come to the wrong place. You've come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me. And I will take you to the man you're looking for. And he led them to the city of Samaria. And if you want to read the rest of that, you can. But, well, I guess I will. Because that's what I have in my notes. So, it says, As soon as they had entered Samaria, 
Elisha prayed, O Lord, now open their eyes. Let them, let them see, and the Lord opened their eyes. And they discovered they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha. He said, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Of course not, Elisha replied. Do we kill prisoners of war? He said, We give them food and drink and then send them back home again to their master. And so when this happened, you see, Elisha showed grace to the ones coming against him. Sometimes that's hard, ain't it? Sometimes that's hard. Some of us are living, are, some of us are going through some stuff right now where some people have come against us, some things have come against us, some entities come against us, and it's up to us to show them grace. I'm going to tell you, that's hard. It's hard, ain't it? But right here we see Elisha did and says, so, but, but, but look at what the grace manifested here. So the king made a great feast for them and sent them home to their master. And after that, the Armenian rain, raiders Stayed away from the land of Israel forever. Or stayed away from the land of Israel. Wow. So let's go to Romans 8 real quick. Because on top of that story, in Romans 8, Paul really kind of solidifies that, you know what? I'm just going to read it. Verse 31 says, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? You see, we have to, we have to live in the trust of who we know. If God is for you, who can be against you? If God is with you, who can come against you? It says, since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for all, won't he also give everything else? <coughs> won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. You see, what's beautiful about God is that you're only righteous because of what Jesus has done for you. We were, in a, we were in a hopeless state. We were in a hopeless state. No way to become holy, no way to become righteous, no way to do good. But when Jesus came in, He gave you that option because He bought you with His own precious blood. And guess what? When you're on His side... There's nothing that can come against you. Nothing. Why do we keep walking in the defeat of the enemy? Why? We continue to walk in the defeat of the enemy, not realizing the victory that God has given us when all we have to do is repent. But you know what happens? Pride gets in the way and we don't want to repent. Why? Because we think we're good right where we are. And we have receipts. And we have justification. And we have this and that and the other. That is all sin. And we live in it. Then who can condemn us? No one. For Christ died for us. And was raised to life for us. And he is sitting at the, in a place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Now, let me say that again. Remember, about six months ago, we went over for two different weeks the difference between condemnation and conviction. Right here is saying, who can condemn us? Nobody can condemn us because condemnation is from the enemy. Conviction is from the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is convicting you of something, you need to repent and move forward and not let the enemy condemn you for that any longer. Right? Right? So we go, he, he says, listen, he says, literally Jesus is sitting at the place of honor at God's right hand. And he's pleading for you and he's pleading for me. And I want to do this again because I think it's so good. So Shane, come up here. I did it with Devin last time. But literally, literally, uh, uh, Devin, you can stand up. So, so 
let's just pretend for one second that that Devin is, is God. Okay. I'm sorry. Just a just a what do you call it? Illustration. Okay. And this is shame. The one who loves Jesus, the one who hey, he struggles, just like all of us, correct? He sins. He asks for repentance. He he hurts. He's he sometimes he has a broken heart. Sometimes he's really good, sometimes he's really bad. But guess what? He said yes to Jesus. He said, Jesus, come into my heart and my life and save me. And please plead for me at the right hand of God. So Devin is looking at Shane and he sees Shane for the sinful being that he is. And guess what happens? Jesus says, no, Father, he is mine. Father, look at Shane. There we go. Look at Shane through my filter. Look at Shane through my blood. And when he looks at Shane through the blood of Jesus, Shane is white as snow, amen? I didn't know exactly Yeah. You know what? Because shame is a child of God, amen? His sins are washed white as snow. Thank you. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we see that God, that Jesus is at the right hand of God pleading for us. He says, Father, no, 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 no. They chose me. You look at them through my filter. You look at them through my blood. And when you look at him through my blood, and my blood covers him and covers his sin, Father says, guess what? Guess what? Nothing can stand against him. Nothing can stand against him. And verse 25 says, Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it, mean no, does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? Or if we are persecuted or hungry or destitute? Or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. But in verse 37 it says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus who loves us. Victory is ours through Christ Jesus. Victory is ours through Christ Jesus. Are you looking at things, are you looking at your circumstances through the filter of Christ? Or are you looking at things through the filter of world? Are you looking at things through the filter of sin or the filter of grace? Because let me tell you, it's real easy to get offended when we look at things through the, the, the filter of sin. And when we start looking at things through the filter of grace, we start to melt because of what Jesus has done for us. And we realize who we are sitting in front of Jesus. A broken man that needs Him more than we need anything else. More than you need that drug. More than you need that car. More than you need that house. More than you need that drink. More than you need anything. You need Jesus. It goes on. It says, It says, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither uh, our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. I can live that, amen? amen. Can you live that? I can I can live in I can live in that promise right there for all the days of my life. Because I'm gonna tell you, it, it might not look like it to you, but that is a promise from God. 
That whole, that whole, nothing can separate us from God's love. That is a promise to you, his son or daughter. In Psalms 118, verse 5, it says, I love this because I feel like some of us are, are walking through this right now. I'm going to tell you, guys, today when I woke up and I got here, I, well, more like today when I woke up and I started to kind of process what all God was going to try to say and try to listen, and the enemy was attacking me with anxiousness. The enemy was attacking me with anxiety. And praise God that I have brothers and sisters that pray over me to rebuke that and rid that. Praise God, I thank you for y'all guys, because y'all real ones. But I feel like we're walking through this. I feel like some of us are in a state of mind or a mental state or a spiritual state where we just need to cry out to God our Father. It says in verse 5, In my distress I prayed to the Lord. And the Lord answered me, and He set me free. In my distress, I prayed to the Lord, and He heard me. And guess what He did in, that res in response to Him hearing me? He set me free. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. Because fear is of the enemy, right? What can mere people do to me? What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. And I will look and triumph at those who hate me. The Lord is for me. And He will help me. And I will stand in victory. Verse 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. Hmm. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. Because I'm going to tell you, people will let you down. People will hurt you. People will say things and hurt you and do things against you. And if you put your Christianity based on those relationships, it's set up for failure. But when you build your Christianity foundation on Jesus Christ, you will be able to see through spiritual eyes when the enemy comes and when he don't. And you will be able to see, hey, this is an attack from the enemy. I'm not going to deal with it. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. So you're telling me like high up people, like people who, who have money or people who hold positions. I should take refuge in the Lord rather than trust in them? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Though hostile nations surround me. Here we go, surrounded again, huh? Though hostile nations surround me, I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. See, God has given you authority to fight against the enemy. Yes, they surrounded me and they attacked me. But I destroy them all with the, with the authority of the Lord. So you're saying, Jesus, that hey, they're going to surround me and sometimes they're even going to attack me. But I can trust in you right here in the middle of it. You're telling me I can sit here and I can have peace because the peace that surpasses all understanding is washed over me through Jesus. That the grace and mercy and, and the power and authority that Jesus has, He's given me and it lives inside of me. And it's not Jordan. And it's not Devin. And it's not anybody in here. It's the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit only. Jordan has no authority. The Holy Spirit does. Shane has no authority. Darren has no authority besides through the Holy Spirit. Point blank, period. No other way around it. When we start thinking it's us, we get prideful. And pride becomes before the fall. And some of us are blind to see that. 
It's not us. It's not me. Guess what? Guess what? You take away title pastor from me, I'm still Jordan, and I'm still a child of God. Amen. And I still have as much authority now as what I do then. Amen. If you take the, the, that title away, that title means nothing to me. I remember my ordination service. I got ordained. doesn't count now. It's in another denomination. But I can still marry you. But don't ask. But don't ask if you're going to get divorced. It's funny. I tell all couples. Yeah, no, I'm serious. I'm not just going to marry you to marry you. Um, I do pre- I, when me and Tara do marriage counseling. And uh, all of them. You're right, Katrina? Yep, told you that. Told you all that. Um, Connor and Jenna, told you all that. And I, I'll, I will never forget. I say that to all of them. And I, I had somebody tell me the other day, Jordan said, um, I thought about giving up, but I, I remembered what you were saying, and I'm not going to be the first one to break that. That's God. That ain't me. But what I'm saying is that it doesn't matter what title or what position or what platform I have, wherever I'm at, I'm representing Jesus. That's all it is. I'm representing Jesus. So in the storm, when they're attacking me, I'm representing Jesus. They swarmed around me like bees. They blazed against me like crackling fire, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. Not once does the psalmist say, that I destroyed them in my own power. Mm. Mm. My enemies did their best to kill me, but the Lord rescued me. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has given me victory. You see, when the enemy surrounds us, God uses that as a tool for us to surrender further to Jesus. I cannot tell you how many times in the last two months I've, I've prayed to God, God, I'm a living sacrifice. I'm a liquid sacrifice. Put me wherever you want me. Take me wherever you want me. Say whatever you want to say for me. Do whatever you want to do for me. Because guess what? Oh, Miss Gill sent me this. Because guess what? I'm face down. I'm face down. When we don't see a way out, we're forced to move out of our own strength and move into God's strength. Did y'all hear that? When we, when God uses the surrounding, because everything is used for good, okay? Everything's used for good. What the enemy meant for evil, he will use for good, okay? And in the surrounding, what God's doing is He's saying, listen, son, it's time to take the next step and surrender. You ain't never went through a battle like this before. You ain't never went through a battle like this before. Why? Because as the faith gets stronger, the tests get harder. Amen. Amen? You ain't never been through a battle like this before, son. Here, hey, surrender a little bit more, and guess what? Walk out of your own strength and walk into mine. And watch what I'm going to do. Because you're going to keep putting one foot in front of the other, and you're not even going to realize you're doing it. <laughs> Who else has been living that? Putting one foot in front of the other, not even knowing how it's happening. Amen? And we got a blessing this week. Amen? Amen. Yell it out loud. Amen. <laughs> Brian got set free this week. Woo! Praise God. We've been praying for that. We've been praying for a breakthrough. We've been praying for it. And guess what? Just at the right time. Maybe it didn't feel like it, right, Brian? But just at the right time, God showed up. Oh, praise God. But guess what? Guess what? Listen, that situation that Brian was walking through, hey, he said, guess what, Lord? He said, I can't walk in my own strength anymore because I don't understand what's going on, Father. He said, let me walk in your strength. And when Brian started walking in, in God's strength, he put one foot in front of the other. And one put, put in front of the other. And guess what he did? While he was walking in God's strength, he stayed sober in God's strength. Amen? Amen. And he walking. And he walking. He's saying, put one foot in front of the other. I'm staying sober. I'm staying sober. And guess what God did? God said, Amen, brother. You are changed. Amen. Praise God. Mm. 
So being surrounded is all about surrendering to Jesus and his victory. And I've already said this first, but we're going to say it again in Genesis 50, 20. It says, you intend, so, so right here, um, this is Joseph talking to his brothers. So his brothers come back, or his brothers come around, and, and Joseph shows them, or it reveals to them who, we all, who he is. And, um, and, and his brother's like, oh, shoot. We have done mess up. And Joseph says, listen, he says, you intended to harm me. But God intended it all for good. Not just a little bit. God intended it all for good. He says, he goes on to say, He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, what we don't understand a lot of times is God brought him to that position to save the bloodline of Jesus. God took Joseph out of something that was comfortable, into something that was uncomfortable, walking in the fire, staying in prison. He did all of that. He was with Joseph, literally building him up, building him up, giving him gifts, building him up, putting him at a position where he saved the bloodline of Jesus because of the wisdom that God gave him. What the enemy intended for harm God intended for good. God was one step ahead of the game. And he's always one step ahead of the game. See, you see, God plays chess while we over here playing checkers. That's what, that's what he does. That's what he does. And trust me, I'm not very good at chess. Joseph, you see, Joseph said, you had me surrounded. Right? You had me surrounded. I couldn't go nowhere. You threw me into a pit so that I couldn't go anywhere. And you sold me into slavery and then lied to my father about what happened to me. And all of those evils which the enemy intended to kill me, Jesus made me a king. What you intended for harm, God meant for good. You see, and God didn't just intend a little bit of it for good. If we read the story of Joseph, he went through it. It was not an easy life. It was not a fun life. He was in prison and he was like, I'm in prison for no reason. Some of you are going through some things and you're like, God, there is no reason for me to be here. And God says, what the enemy intended for harm, I intend for good. It's time to start walking in our victory. I can have the, the band come on up. The enemy today, ladies and gentlemen, he is trying to steal, kill, and destroy you. And I've got one statement for you, but God. But God. The enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy, but God. Today, You've got to start putting your faith and trust in Jesus. Every single aspect of it. Every single part of it. Because the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But God is going to use it for good. God intends it for your good. And I know right now that you might not can see that. And I know right now it might hurt. You might be walking through a, through a season of pain and a season of hurt. But I'm going to tell you that God intends it for good if you will keep walking. If you keep putting one foot in front of the other and you do not quit, you win. Amen. He will turn every situation into a victory if you let him. God has put you in a position to save lives of the people around you. He has put you in a position to save the lives of people that don't know Jesus. He has put you in a position to lead others to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You see in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, um, uh, pull, pull, pull that up, pull that up, um, Cameron. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, y'all can get to it real quick. It starts in verse 1. For everything there is a season 
a time for everything, act, for every activity under heaven. Go to the next one. Just keep going until I say stop. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time to What do people really get from their hard work? Keep going. I have seen the burden God has placed on all of us, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted humanity in the human heart, eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what season you're walking through today, but I know that God's victory is ahead of you. I know that the rain is coming. I know that help is on the way. I know that and I believe that. You want to know why I believe that? Because my God tells me that. My God tells me that he won't leave me here. My God tells me he won't leave you here. He won't leave you there. You know why? Because he never leaves you and he never forsakes you. He is always carrying you when you don't even know you're having to be carried. Are you surrounded today? Surrender to God in your surrounding. Surrender to God in your surrounding. God, I can you much. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray for healing. Father, I pray for discernment. Father, I pray for rejuvenation, for renewing. Father, of your people's hearts today. God, I, I thank you for the furnace. Because in the fire, you were fine. I thank you for the pruning. Because when we prune, more fruit comes. God, do with us whatever you want to do with us. It's all for your honor and glory. May we walk, may we stand, Father, in the boldness of the Holy Spirit and walk in the victory that you give us because we know in whom we trust. May we have a heart and a mind like Elisha, Father, to have so much trust in you that there is no fear. Mm, Father, oh, I pray that over your people today, Father. In your son's precious name, amen. Please stand.